Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. If you're a subscriber, thanks for staying subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, you might want to think about it. Uh, today we're working on a 2000 Honda CRV. Uh, we're going to be replacing the driver's side um, CV shaft. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off by jacking it up. Um, I'm jacking it up with our Honda supply where to jack your vehicle up with their um, jack like when your tire gets close by or something. So that's what I'm using. Let's, uh, uh, are we free? We're not free of the ground and I think I've exceeded my jack limit. There we go, we're feeling around. And then of course, I'm using a jack stand. Uh, just in case something happens. Because um, you don't want the vehicle falling on you. Let's go ahead and take the wheel off. Let's go ahead and take the wheel off. I'm using a uh, three-fourths, I'm throwing a three-fourths um, socket to get the lug nuts off. I think it's a little bit smaller, but this is where three-fourths works fine. <laughs> Yay, hit right off. Look, the tire's off, yay. To, because we're doing the, sheet, the CV shaft, you gotta remove this um, uh, nut here. Um, there's a little pinch where they uh, pinch it down. I can't show you. Um, so it locks into place. We'll open that up. But first, we're gonna just put some WD-40 on it um, to hopefully loosen it up. I gotta order some better, some better penetrant stuff. But I'll show you how to how you hammer um, the crimp or the pinch out so you can begin to turn it. So as you can see right here, there's a where they crimp the nut down. You want to take a flat head and just hammer that out so that you will be able to rotate the nut. And I probably have a, no, it's getting there. Cause you'd want like a flat head that fits in there perfectly. This one's a little fat. It's getting there and you just, the pinch out and push it out too get in there and I'm actually going in another size uh, flathead so I got a smaller width flat head. There's also one that's quite a bit shorter. My hand might be in the way of the filming. We just hammer it in, push it out. This one's really in there. Um, grab the other one. So that's basically what you want to do. Don't want to keep filming this because I look like a fool. You get the point of what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll get back to the repair. Actually, I think that's enough. That should spin off. So let's see. It's a size. Um, what size do I have here? Uh, 36 um, socket. If you don't have air tools, what you do is you actually uh, take the center cap out of your wheel um, and use a breaker bar uh, to get it undone. And you have the wheel on the ground, of course. Let's see if this comes off. 
So there we go. That's simple, guys. To make it easier for me, and so that you guys can see, I'm gonna remove the caliper and the rotor. Um, and we're gonna, to compress the caliper, I'm just sticking it in the a flathead screwdriver in the hole and compressing, or I thought I would. I think they have a problem with this. It's not good. Um, looks like the push pin is actually getting stuck. So I'm actually gonna disassemble this and uh, fix it for them, but I'm not gonna cover it in this video because uh, this is not what we're covering. So I'm gonna, um, I guess I can show you how to take this off. Uh, so let me go ahead and get the right size socket. I'm pretty sure it's a 12. What do we got? A 12. I'm gonna grab a breaker bar for this. I know I'm in the way, and if I'm not mistaken, it's down for this. I'm actually gonna hammer it. Came right out. The bottom one as well. Push it on, hammer it out. There we go. Now I can take my impact gun, which is right here. I'm sure it's dark for you guys to see. Sorry, on reverse. And just take, there's one, and there's the other one. There we go. So, and this won't be easy because it's not compressing. Um, there we go. So the issue isn't the comp caliper not compressing, it's the push pins. They're, uh, I'm pushing hard and they're, they're seized. So I'm gonna um, see if I can get that out for them um, and grease it all up. But there's the, oh that pad went. That's not good and there's like quite a bit of rust inside the rotor. I may actually have to tell them they need some pads to call them and let them know. But that's simple. Um, we'll take the, the worst thing is, is the pads actually look fine, but because the, the shim came off, I might be able to just put the shim back on, um, but we'll take the, the pads out and, uh, we'll t take the pads out. Sorry, I'm lethargic. It's morning time. Um, so the bolts for the the uh, um, bracket or size 17. I loosen them before the same way I did with the push pin bolt. There's one. So next we're gonna wanna remove the tie rod from the knuckle to make it easier to turn the knuckle so you can get uh, the, uh, what is it called? Get to the CV shaft. Um, first we want to move the cotter pin. Let's see if we can tap it with a hammer lightly. Get it to... We're not going to get that lucky. Um, I'm using a pick to get in there. This one's in quite... This one's really rusted. I'll be putting a new one in for them. And that's not good. I'm going to grab another pick. Basically just grab the stronger pick. Um, want to get in the round of the... If you can find it of the cotter pin. Oh, there it is. It's really in there. I'm just forcing the pick through and twisting. And I think the cotter pin just snapped. That's not good. Because I don't, yeah, I think it did. The cotter pin's in pretty bad shape. Um, so let me grab some pliers now. Let me see if I can pull it out. I'm pretty. It'd be great if it just came out. Otherwise, I'll have to just drill it through to get it out or use a little punch, but I have a tiny enough drill bit that'll work and that's just gonna happen so basically I'm gonna drill through it um, after I uh, yeah cuz it's it, it broke and I'm pretty sure there's just so much corrosion down in there 
taking the, the nut off, it'll it'll still the nut will go right past the those uh, cotter pins. So let's go ahead use the air tool. Looks like it's a size uh, 17. We're in reverse. Let's go ahead and try taking this off. Yep, see it goes right, comes right off. There we go, right out. And then uh, I'll show you how I get it out, or to get the, with the remainder of the cotter pin out. So then what you wanna do, you wanna shock the um, tie rod out. So you just take a hammer, hit where, what it goes through, and it came out, or it's loosening at least. Or, what you can do, in this case, you take the nut, put the nut so it's flush. Uh, come on. I might want to put some grease on it first. This is kind of, do I see this? Um, I'm going to put some WD-40 on it. No, I'm just going to keep hammering. Because if you put the nut on it, it'll come off. It'll go up, and then you'll have a hard time getting the nut out. Let's just put this on a slight bit. It'd be a little difficult, isn't it? Um, the customer told me that this Honda has sat. So that could be probably a lot of the issue that it sat for so long. I'm um, rusted. Line up, there we go. Now let's tap it up. I wanna do that because it's fucking moving around and fucking up the threads. Oh, excuse my French. We're gonna cut this because um, I'm swearing and then uh, it'll come back once I have it off. So rather than leave you guys in the dark, um, I've already written a note for the customer that they need to replace this because the boot is rotted. But I ended up just taking a pickle fork and hammering it in and eventually the pressure, it, it came up. So now we have motion of the steering knuckle, which is what we want. Um, yeah. I'm tripping. So now what we're gonna do is make sure that we can actually get the CV shaft out, because sometimes the CV shafts are stuck. So this is the end of the CV shaft, which the nut goes on. We're gonna take a hammer and just hammer it. And I can see, hopefully the camera shows, the CV shaft is coming out. For this one, if you bugger up the threads, it doesn't matter, because this one's being replaced. So as you can see, it's out. So now, let me zoom you out. Maybe we can do this right here. Zoom you all the way out. I'm gonna turn the knuckle as far as I can. Are you able to see? Let's move the camera over this way. That way you guys should be able to see exactly what I am doing. Move this can. All right, and I'm hoping to do this without having to undo the lower ball joint. That's what I'd like to do. And we you just push the CV shaft out? And I actually don't think I'm gonna be that lucky. I think I'm going to have to undo the bottom uh, the bottom ball joint, which hopefully will be easier. That's the for the bottom ball joint. I can't really get you a good view. It's the same thing as the tire down. There's a cotter pin. We're gonna undo it. I'll get you start filming back when I have that off. So not as easy as I thought, but I got it. It was really rusted. Um, trusty pickle fork. Um, the ball joint's bad anywho. Um, needs to be replaced. Pickled it really hard. <laughs> it's a pickle fork. Um, and then I stuck a persuader, that's just what I call it, just a big bar, um, between the, there's my finger, engine subframe right here and the control arm. I was able to get it out. So now, what you want to do is we're in focus. I think so. You want to grab. I might actually need. Let's hear. There, that gives you more. You want to grab the steering knuckle, pull it out, and pull the CV shaft. And now, 
the CV shaft is the bad one is out. Well, it's trying to be annoying, but it's out. There we go. It's out. So now the old one, we're gonna have lots of fun with that one. The old one. Let's see if I can get you guys in there. Picking you up and dropping you and all that fun. All right. So now we're locked. The old one goes into the transmission. As as you can see, there's the brake. All that we're really going to do is stick a crowbar behind it up against the transmission which is in there. Uh, so that's the transmissions right there. The hole in the CV shaft, that's the green stuff. There's mounts in the transmission. I uh, can't really show you but I'll show you outside of the car how I do it. Um, just going to pry between the, the bell housing of the CV shaft and it should pop out. There's a ring in there. So it might be a little difficult, but if you you just have to push hard and it'll it'll come free. So once it's out, I'll show you. Okay, so this is the old shaft. There's the hole. Um, here's the new one. You want to make sure that they're the same. Um, these are the same. Um, you're probably like, well, the length is different because this shaft has been pulled so far out of the bell housing. Um, the other thing is, let me see if I can get it in focus. There we go. So this one has. A C clip, maybe let's see if I can get in there and really show you. Or just a retaining clip. There it is. See there's that one. It's that thing right there. And that, that's what helps it locks it into place. And um, there's one on the old one. Um, the new one comes with a new not I reuse the old one. I like to make sure they're the same on both sides. I just reuse them. There's no reason why you can't. Um, so basically what I did. Um, I just took a pry bar and pried it out of the transmission. It's really easy. It doesn't take too much force. And now I'll show you how to get the new one in. All right. So down in there, put it right here with my finger. This is where it goes in the transmission. Um, and then you're just going to stick the one end, the bell housing end, into uh, into it. Um, I don't know how I'm going to. I'm not really going to be able to get you guys any light. Not in there because I'm actually holding the light by hand, but um, I'll put it right there. So basically, do not pull on the new CV shaft. Leave it in the place that's in. Don't pull on the bell housing, or you can destroy it that way. Just don't pull on it. Um, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to want to put it in the transmission, feed it in, and put it in the transmission hole. And by feel, oh, my head's probably in the way now. Where is the hole? Right there. But I feel, you'll feel the splines. I'm not really feeling them yet. So you just gotta turn the shaft so you can feel the splines. On this one, now, slightly frustrating. I have to jam it in. Uh, and when you jam it in, you just wanna pull back and push. And I'm not feeling it, not in straight, I think is the biggest issue because of the steering knuckles kind of in the way. Uh, am I in? I'm in the transmission, but I don't feel my splines lining up. There we go, splines have lined up. And then you just wanna, there you go. It's in the transmission now, that simple. You'll hear the click and it'll go in further. Now for the fun part, let's put all this back together. First things first, we gotta put this in that hole, I'm gonna put some, or in the, um, uh, the, the hub. But what I wanna do first is grab some anti seize and put on the threads, just a little bit will do, uh, the splines of this CV shaft. So for the next person, whoever has to do it, it'll come out easy. There we go, just about it. Grab a paper towel because this anti-seize gets on all, all over everything. Everything, everything, everything. Grab your steering knuckle. I'm gonna rotate, pull this out as far as I can. And it help feed it in. And it's found the splines and it's in. Now Push down on your control arm. I'm actually gonna, hopefully you all can see this. Grab 
the persuader, push down on the control arm, bend that back into place, the ball joint. Come on, get in there. There we go. I gotta, the caliper is in the way, making it so I can't put it back in. Yeah. Find the hole. Watch your fingers when you do this as well. And there we go. That's back where it needs to go. Um, then basically, can you see everything? Yeah. Basically this should be, I have to move it a little bit. There we go, that went into place. Taking the castle knot, put the castle knot on. For some reason this was kind of difficult to get on the threads. It fought me a little bit. There we go. That, this was a, this is, not was, didn't change halfway through the job. I believe it was, it's a 17. Yeah, so I'm gonna tighten that up and then we'll go to the next thing. Because the cutter pin broke off inside the tie rod end, um, I have a drill, an air drill on forward with a bit, don't know the size, I don't think it really matters. I'm just gonna drill it out. Go ahead and put the cotter pin in. Pull, cotter pins in. I just want to take the sides and just wrap it around. I and I'm gonna be in here soon doing this ball joint for these people, so and these customers. So there. Um, now we just reassemble the brakes. All right, let's go ahead and put the rotor on, match up the, the holes for the screws. Come on, light, let's be. Can you guys see still? Yeah, all right. So match up the holes for the screw, so it's gotta go this way. What's wrong? I had a really hard time getting these off. It was really weird. It's just some light caps. There we go. Now for the screws. There's two of them. I just have to, there they are. Right here. You just screw them in tight. Go ahead and put the caliper bracket back on. Sadly, I actually was not able to fix the push pins, um, but I'm gonna have them, all they need is the hardware. The caliper is still fine. They just need the hardware. Um, feel around, put it in. Let me actually move you guys to get a better view. You can see and you guys in better focus. There we go. And the light. All right, so where to find the hole. For this one, I found it. The bottom one. Where'd the bolt go? There it is. It's hot because I tried heating it out, heating the pushman out. That did not work. Still very hot. Um, 
17, I'm pretty sure. And of course my 17 is not right here. Where is it? It's not up there. I'll be back when I find my 17. So I found my 17, it was over on my prep bench. All right, air tool, put it on forward, sitting number four, and just tighten them down. That's done. Done. Make sure the bottom one is definitely tight. And it is. Now, we grab the pads. Pads, 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 or the shims. Let's put the shims in. Again, it's not that big of a deal that I didn't clean them and everything because I'm, I've, I've informed the, the customer that they need new ones. So, make sure the shims are nicely spaced so they don't rub on the rotor. That's no fun when that happens. Now the pads, tab side, oh, I gotta put the, that back in like that came off. That's in really bad shape. There's the bowed out. Interesting. Anyways, um, these are gonna have to be, this isn't gonna be fun to put them in. But this isn't a break job, so I'm gonna cut. Alright, so these are a size, um, the caliper bolts are a size 12. Yep. Just put them on. One. This one's going slower because the push pin's hot. So now we're going to put the wheel mount on. I'm actually going to use the one that it came with because it's the same size. Uh, 32. I have it on forward. That's all it takes. That's done. I'm going to take a flathead and a hammer. Just hammer this. Oh, I'm going to be in the way no matter what I think. Hammer this down so it's kind of locked into place. Now I'm going to put the wheel on, torque at 200 foot pounds of torque, and that's it. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like, give it a like button. Um, if you're so subscribed at the end of this, that's really awesome. Thanks. Um, if you like to subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to put videos out every Monday. Um, questions in the uh, comment section, I try to always answer them. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.